Hey everybody, hope you're well and enjoying the nice weather we have. It's going to get very hot and humid, um, but that's August for us, right? Um, just want to share uh, from John 15. Um, we did this last night at Youth and um, just going through uh, the imagery here that uh, that Jesus uses here to describe himself, the Father, and, and those who are, are his and those who are not his. Um, and the, the purpose was just to, I wanted to challenge the youth. Um, you know, to make sure that they are um, actually, you know, abiding in Christ and what that does that mean. And they have, if they have made that decision to believe He is the true God, that they've consciously done that themselves and not just do it because their parents or others have just told them to, right? Um, it's a personal relationship to have with God, and uh, each one of us have to make that uh, commitment on our own and to believe in Him on our own. And so, um, just challenge the youth, you know, have, if they have done that, if they really truly know God and believe in Him, and if we do, what does that mean for us? Um, and so, for us to know that we, we have to come to Him and allow Him to work in our hearts and, uh, you know, change us. And for us to, you know, go read His Word, understand who He is, understand what the things He's asked us to do, to be like Christ. And to, uh, to submit to Him and, and to spend time praying to Him, talking to Him. Um, you know, confessing our sins and, uh, you know, just aligning ourselves with God. All the things that, you know, keep that uh, personal relationship close and, and to, you know, live out what we say we are. And we see here in John 15, again, the imagery is, is, is so great. And, and we're just, we'll read it and we'll kind of go through um, just the, the what's, what's it saying here. Verse 1, I am the true vine and my father is a vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit he takes away and every branch that does bear fruit he prunes that it may bear more fruit already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you abide in me and I in you as a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine neither can you unless you abide in me I am the vine you are the branches whoever abides in me and I in him he it is that bears much fruit for apart from me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask what, whatever you wish and it will be done for you. But this my Father is glorified. By this my God, my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. And we see the, um, the example is Christ being the vine. We know if we look at a vineyard and He's the vine and we're the branches. We know the vine carries all the nutrients, everything that the branch needs to bear fruit. And so that's where Christ is. We have Christ in our lives. Um, there should be evidence of Christ in us. We should show that in, in different ways of the fruit that we have. And we see that if, if in people who don't know Christ, they, they are separated. They, uh, they don't show any fruit at all. And so for us as Christians, we, we, uh, we bear fruit. And there's gonna be times where God's still sanctifying us. He's still, um, you know, the Father's going to prune us, take away things so that we can bear more fruit. He's going to work on us, continually work and work us, and so that uh, we can look more and more like Christ and, and get into that glorified state eventually in heaven with Him. Um, but for us, if we do believe who Christ is and, and um, we abide in Him, uh, He will abide in us. And there will be, uh, again, evidence of that. So for us, is to look at our lives and um, we can have moments of, uh, where we uh, we don't look like we're producing much fruit or any at all, and so you know we're gonna have times in our lives where we we kind of uh, mess up because it's us, right? Um, but for, you know to take those times and uh, look and examine our hearts at all times and to make sure that we're allowing Christ to abide in us and to keep His words in us, um, so that we can you know look like Christ and do the things He asks because of what He's done for us. As we know, and and for us to, um, you know, we, we need to have others around us, right? Not only, um, you know, spend each day with God 
um, you know, confessing to him, praying to him, uh, thanking him for everything he's done, having that time with God, right, to, to kind of each day uh, do that so that we can start the day properly and, and, and align ourselves with God through the day, remind ourselves why we're here, what we need to be doing, um, working on the things that we, we struggle with. Um, and also, you know, taking the time to be reading this word, right? To, uh, to nourish ourselves in God's word, to understand and, and to be learned, uh, to be taught what, uh, what we need to know. But we also need others around us. Uh, we, we need other Christians. We need to be in fellowship with uh, brothers and sisters in Christ to, to help us through those journeys. In those times when we're, we're willfully running to sin, um, that we have those people that can pour into us and, and, and challenge us and to, um, you know, you know, bring correction to us, but pray with us and, and heal us and, and uh, you know, without judgment, bring us back to God. And so it's important. And I was telling, you know, telling the youth kids, that's why we have youth, is to have this community uh, where the kids can come and hear about Jesus. And we have a community of, of believers that can make relations with other believers. And when they, you know, when they're at school, you know, or you know, some of the kids have jobs, and you know, it's been many stories that it's not fun at their school, or fun at their jobs for different reasons, and um, they can come here and, and have people that love them for who they are, and there's no judgment, there's no, um, you know, attack because of one's insecurities. Um, everybody, you know, at the, at the youth, um, or being, you know, they're, they're taught, and, and it's they know the expectation is that you love everybody as they are, whoever walks in that door. And they understand that, um, and they know that you know they're loved, and they can be themselves, and um, they can hear the truth, and they don't. There's no, um, you know, temptation uh, of the world there pressuring them, and so that's what we need as even as adults is um, a community of believers that uh, we can that walk with us through this life, and that you know we we you know help each other, we uh, we're there for one another through these times, and so. You know, so we can abide in Christ because uh, we don't want to do it alone. We don't want to be isolated uh, by ourselves and think that we can handle the, uh, the things of life on our own. We need Christ each day. And um, that's why Christ gave us a church so that we can have fellowship with one another and that we can be with brothers and sisters, like-minded, whose goal is Christ, to live for Him, to do the things for Him, and to, uh, to witness for Him. And so, um, yeah, we need to do the things we, we should be doing to help us keep in, in in Christ and so that he can keep working through us and people keep can keep seeing Christ in us and that's the change and that's the purpose we have here on this earth is to be missionaries for God and wherever we're at whatever we do uh, to show Christ to those around us at our work at our schools um, in our neighborhood um, and we need we need help we need to have people to, to pour into us and to um, guide us and care for us and pray for us as we go through this journey of life because because uh, it's tough and that's why God uh, left us a church so we can come together and do this together and uh, to glorify God ultimately in all of our lives so yeah so that's all I want to say to you guys today and so um, hope you have a good day and we'll uh, we'll talk to you soon